Hey, so we have a bit of a family tradition that we do every year and we've been doing it since the girls were little and they're 15 and 11 now. And we just adapt it each year as they get older. We can just adapt it to who they are each new year and it's super fun. So for our Easter egg hunt, we do a workout in the form of a circuit. And we create this in conjunction with the egg hunt. So each station has an egg, an exercise, and a riddle for the next station. We personalize the riddles a little bit to our kids and who they are and our home setup, how our house is set up. And it takes a little bit of time, but it's really not that hard to do and it's worth it. We're not writers, that's not a particular skill in our skill set but I'll share with you the system we use to put together our fitness circuit Easter egg hunt. I'll put our template in the description box so you can use that if you like. And I'll also share with you our riddles that we're using for this year. And some of them you might be able to use or, or tweak to suit you. Some of them will be pretty specific to our kids, but that's fine. You can just leave those and use what suits you. And of course, you don't have to include any exercises if that doesn't suit you and your family. We just find this really fun. I do want to be really clear though that this isn't an earn your calories type endeavor. We just don't subscribe to that way of thinking and we never want to put that thinking on our kids. This is just a fun way of getting the blood pumping with some joyful movement and spending time together and celebrating our bodies and taking care of ourselves with habits that serve us. So step one is get your eggs, get your chocolate ready and plan out how many stations you're going to include in your circuit or in your hunt. Step two is write a list of the exercises that you're going to include in your circuit if you're including them. And you don't need to overthink it, you know, star jumps, pitter patter, running on the spot, uh, shuttle runs, whatever, for little kids especially. If you're using any strength-based stuff, make sure it's stuff that your kids can manage to do without hurting themselves. So safety first, and other than that, just make a list that matches up with the number of stations you're having. Step three is to write the locations you're gonna hide. So write the rooms. And again, you need to match up the number of locations with the number of exercises and the number of eggs that you're hiding. Step four is where the fun starts. We're gonna start writing the riddles. So you're going to start out by, by filling out the template or on your own sheet of paper, you'll write station one, the location of that station. So this is your starting point and then the exercise you're doing there, and then you'll go straight to station two and decide on that location because that's going to influence how you write that riddle. So you'll always fill out the next destination before you write the riddle to get there because we need to work backwards. Make sense? Little tips for riddle writing. This is how I approach it. I'm not a writer, as I said, but this is the way I've approached it. I would start by thinking of the destination so if the destination's the kitchen, then I'll think of words related to the kitchen. So fridge, food, freeze, freezer, bench top, any words related to the kitchen that inspire you. And you might be able to think of words that rhyme with those. So bridge, mood, breeze, stop, words that rhyme with those kitchen words. And from there, start to think about a sentence that you might be able to work around. So I came up with exercise helps boost our mood because mood rhymes with food, and then I need to just finish it off with food, which is let's go to the place where we keep our food. So that's my little process for riddle writing, and really don't overthink it, like your kids don't care. It's just meant to be fun, and I just think it's really cool when you've written these things for them. I just think that's a cool thing. No guilt though, if you just find templates online, and we've done that some years, there's heaps of templates of just generic um, egg hunt things. So whatever works for you, do it. It's more about being together and having fun. And step five is to set it up. So put the egg out, put the riddle out, set the thing up. And if you're using any equipment for your workout, make sure you've set that up too. And another consideration is um, if you, depending on how old your kids are, keep things as out of sight as you want them to be and consider the areas that you're moving through throughout the hunt and if they're going to be able to spot eggs that aren't, that you're not up to yet. So consider that, make sure things are concealed and inconspicuous as you want them to be, depending on your kids' ages and stages and have fun. So just to save you looking in the description, I'll just go through ours if you want to hear them. Uh, if not, then thanks for watching and see you next time. So we start in the lounge room, we do some star jumps, and the riddle is, 
The star jump's got your blood circulating. Now jog to where mum likes meditating. Then we go to our bedroom and we do some squats. Uh, and it says squats are great. They make us strong. Now where might Georgie write a song? Because Georgie likes to write songs. Then we go to Georgie's room and we do pitter patters for 30 seconds. Pitter patter is fun for sure, but our legs can only go so far. If we need to take a longer trip, I guess we might hop in the dot, dot, dot. So we go to the car and we do some gorilla rows with the um, kettlebells set up already. You guys are totes the opposite of frail. On an unrelated note, could you check the mail? Off to the letterbox, butt kicks times 20. Endorphins are flowing, they boost our mood. Let's skip to where we keep the food. Off to the pantry for 10 push-ups in the kitchen. Near the spot where we hang your stocking, the place where you go if you feel like rocking. And that is the rocking chair. And we do 10 dips. You're moving at a steady pace. Now let's chasse to the dancing space. So chasse is a dancing word because our kids are dancers. I'm not 100% sure what a chasse is, but it's a dancing move. <laughs> All right, off to the dance room. We do a 30 second headstand, a handstand. We love you so much, guys. You're just the best. Billy, where do you go to get some rest? And we go to Billy's bedroom and do high knees for 30 seconds. You're halfway there, now let's keep going. Look near the lawn that does require mowing because out the back we have synthetic grass and out the front we have real grass. So we're at the bushes in the front, we do five burpees. Your clothes transform here with the help of you know who, from sweaty and stinky to good as new, and that's off to the laundry, where we do 10 lunges. There's multitasking in the air. Where can you sing and wash your hair? So we actually do a 30 second plank, probably just outside the bathroom. Heartstopper Grays and Station 19. Billy loves to chill here like a queen. So that is Billy's beanbag in the lounge room where we do side plank on the right side for 30 seconds. She's amazing, she's a star, she's cried and she's laughed. She sits in this spot while she hones her craft. And that is Georgie, who is an aspiring actress. So we go to her wardrobe mirror where she practices expressions. And we do plank on the left side. Every moment with you guys, feel, I feel like a winner. This is the place where we share family dinner. And obviously that is the dinner table. And I have a final one, which I can't read. So you'll have to look in the, in the description box to read that in full. But thanks for watching. I wish you and your family just the best Easter and so much fun and love together and have a great long weekend. Mwah. Thanks for watching.